Hey guys, welcome to the Thorntail Axe information video. If you're here for M-Lock light mounts, go ahead and hit that link down below. It'll take you over to the M-Lock video, tell you everything you need to know about them. If you're here because you're a part of the quad rail gang or cult or faction or mafia, whatever you want to call yourself, guys, you're in the right place. Contact! Push, push! Thorntail X, what is it? Well, the X is for 10 years. We've been doing this for a little over 10 years now in the light mountain space and trying to provide the best illumination accessories that we can because it's a full-time job trying to figure out where to start when you start adding lights and lasers and suppressors and grips and sling mounts and everything else around the gun. Um, so we want to try to simplify that process. And over the last 10 years, with the change of weapons alone, um, and then look at lasers just in the last 10 years of how that's really made us rethink how we, we set up our weapons, even our optics nowadays. Um, lights and competition with suppressors, et cetera, et cetera, right? I could go on and on and on. I think those changes alone that we've seen in the last 10 years has really made us kind of, uh, I guess, inspired to, to revamp the entire Thorntail line. Um, not just from a design standpoint, but a simplicity standpoint, because we've had over 20 mounts now, I think, looking back in the last 10 years. And what I'm about to share with you today in these videos, whether you're on the M-Lock video or the 1913 video, is four options. Four options that mostly do it all. Now, we are going to add a couple more options in the future, some, some different cantilevers and things that we started with a long time ago, but we wanted to get the baseline down, and that's what I'm going to share with you today. Also, from a design standpoint, uh, we looked at operational experience, hard use in the last 10 years, um, different metallurgies, and we've realized that we can do it even better. That's the whole point of innovation, right? So we're going to share with you in these videos of how we've taken and changed the metallurgy, how we've changed the design, and gotten away from some of the old things that can create failure points, like making things too complex. You know, we used to have um, screw encapsulation systems and different mounting points, and we, we were shaving off so much metal, it started to get a little bit on the scary side. So we decided to stop there and revamp, and that's gonna be the Thorntail X, guys. Picatinny, or known as 1913 rails as well. Um, in this video, guys, I want to talk about the two options that we have that will help you mount a flashlight onto your Picatinny rail. Um, like this Mark 18 here, right, or any type of quad rail system. And not just a quad rail system, but also if you have a, just a top rail that you want to mount it on, like, like a BCM rifle I had earlier, which I'll show you guys, or I have an AK here, I've got some vectors, like those are just top rail systems. So I'll show you that here in a second. But I want to get into why we did the mounts this way. Um, Again, like I mentioned in the intro, you know, we've, we've had a lot of different versions of lights, I think almost 20 at this point, where we've really taken a lot of time to sit and figure out how to get as many birds killed with as few stones as possible. And I think we're doing a pretty good job. Now, again, we will have some other cantilevered versions. We know our SBR mounts that we had in the past were pretty popular, which cantilevered that light a little bit more forward. Uh, that's going to be in production here pretty soon as well. But from, again, a baseline standpoint, just to get us started here, um, we have two versions. We have the offset version, and then we have the laser version. Okay, so now laser would be what I have on this Mark 18. It sits the, the light just a little bit higher up and offsets it from the laser so we don't compete, right? Because, again, I don't want that head and that laser body touching. Um, that's not going to help you from a zero standpoint on the laser, especially when the gun starts recoiling, and that's just not good altogether. So we want to have that little bit of space because I see people putting their lights and lasers almost together where they're touching and, uh, and I wouldn't suggest doing that. <clears throat> the offset version here as you can kind of see just sits off to the side of a, a let's say this is literally my 12 o'clock the top rail on top here you can see how it just sits right down on the side of the rail system so this is great for AKs or sub guns that have a really clean flat top um, you could also put it on a standard top rail AR like the one I showed in the M-Lock video where there's my top rail, but I've got M-Lock all the way around. Where some people don't like to use the M-Lock, they still want that solid 1913 connection. You can mount that guy right there on the side. It'll actually lower the mount a little bit lower than the inline on the M-Lock. So again, just more options there for you guys to choose. As far as the laser model, the laser model, instead of sitting on the side, it sits on top. 
Okay, so that's a big difference between that one and the offset. Um, besides also having two different mounting solutions on this. So you can raise or lower the light on the side of the offset mount. The laser is kind of specific for lasers. So again, as you can see, the laser model sitting right here to clear that, that PEC-15 or whatever laser you're running. Now, if you're running like a D-ball or something on a higher mount, well, then you could probably get away with running something like this. So you just got to kind of look at your system. And I'm just, again, I'm spitballing conscious data dump to you, just showing you a couple of different configurations. So again, know your system, right? And know what you want to do with it. I know my intention with this gun is to where I have manual laser, so I can come up and run manual laser, whether it's VIZ or IR. And then I have to, again, deliberately bring my thumb back to hit that switch. So that way I'm not negligently discharging, especially if I'm running night vision or something. And that's why I'm running that particular system right there in that configuration, okay? <clears throat> if you're running an AK, this is kind of the classic way people run AKs like in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, the front end of the AK is what we're talking about here. This is a Fuller Phoenix front end um, on a standard back end. So this back end, there's not a lot of options for rails, right, for optics and stuff. So we, we, we tend to find people putting their optics, so specifically the aim point's been always the most popular one up there because it, it takes the abuse. Uh, that'll go up on the, the top gas tube or the scout rail as they call it. So that now, in that short micro optic, allows me to still run a a flashlight up here so I'm choosing again the offset Picatinny to put my hand and thumb position right in the perfect place so when I need to come up on that light I have quick quick light okay now if I switch shoulders on it I've got to kind of rotate the gun and it can get a little funky but that's what we call an exercise and compromise as it pertains to lighting so if I needed to rotate it and get light on target I could do that okay um, and that's because it's probably gonna be in some type of short close quarter situation otherwise I'd stay on my strong shoulder okay but that's not the point of the video right now so but that's a great option right there is the standard offset non-laser version on an AK platform other guns a little bit more of a different style gun just to show you um, something that people might go out oh, off the wall but it actually is really not this is the vector from Chris and um, I'm running the same, same as I have on an AK. So that's your offset, pick a tinny. And you can see that puts my thumb position right in the perfect place. If I'm not running the light, I'll just keep my thumb on the receiver. And you can see how slim that is right down the side of the gun. And right where the grip is, it fits perfect. So I can get good light control and good power authority with that. Okay. And I can also switch sides easily and have just the same exact power authority there. So. I could sit here for probably hours showing you guys different configurations, but I think you guys got to get the point. <laughs> guys, thanks for joining me today on this video, and I hope it helped uh, kind of solve some of the problems and potential solutions that you need to go out there and look for. Because like I said, it's a full-time job trying to figure out what mounts, what lights, what lasers, what optics, etc. right? So when I can sit here and talk for hours, like I said, about what configuration um, goes with what, but I think that's going to be back on you. Uh, with that said, I think it's important for us to ask ourselves a very, very critical question. Um, and I'm going to give you that quiz, like I reminded you in the intro. And that question is, tell me about your gun. So if you could pause the video right now, literally, I'm, and try this, man. It works because we do this in every single class. And you get a lot of a lot of crazy responses. So if you want to pause it and write this down, go for it. If not, self-reflect on that for a second. If I if I looked at this gun and you asked me, Travis, tell me about your gun. Well, I'd say it's a Daniel Defense Mark 18. It's got a uh, L can on it. Uh, it's got a Pack 15 laser, a Surefire M300 with the dual switch. It's got the vampire head, got RC2 SOCOM can, um, BCM foregrip, BCM stock, Knight's armament flip up. Uh, that, that's typically what you'll hear from people when you ask them to tell you about their rifle. Um, but I don't, I don't think that's the best way to describe something that's a life support piece of equipment. So imagine if I was bleeding out and you ran by and you were unarmed and I said, hey, take my rifle. And I threw you my rifle and you said, well, tell me about it. Do you think I'd 
tell you about the optic and what kind of pecs on it and what kind of flashlight and what kind of suppressor it is because that doesn't help you at all. So think about that question now. Maybe write that down, pause the video again, okay? Um, because I want to know what this thing does. I want to know everything, specifically the sighting system, the rounds that I'm using. I would say, hey, here's what I'm running. Um, I'm running Mark 262 ammo. I've got a 100 yard zero on this thing because it's an L can. It needs to be zero down 100 meters. Uh, I am combat effective out to 300 meters, which means you don't have to do any holds. Uh, after that, I use the 400 hold at 400. At 500, I use 550 because it's a little bit off because BDCs are a gimmick to a point. And then area targets out to 600 meters, stack about 10 foot high, um, hold just a little bit low on the 600 reticle inside of this. I have not tested it out to seven to a thousand, which the, the optic certainly goes to. Um, I have the lights configured in the white light mode right now, but if you need to switch, you can switch it to the vampire mode for flood. On the laser, I've got a parallel zero and it is same combat effectiveness as the optic all the way out to infinity, okay? Um, just to give you a couple examples of how I would describe my weapon to you if it needed to save your life. So I think we should start thinking a little bit more about our rifles in a more intimate way of knowledge. Know what it does for you, because that's gonna do nothing more but help you uphold that higher standard of care for society. Guys, thanks again for joining me today. I'm Travis Haley, stay sharp, be safe, and don't forget to die free.